Welcome to the car guys. I am here at Bewley for my first ever Simply Mercedes event. I've never been to this before. I'm very excited because as many of you may know, I quite like a Mercedes, particularly the older stuff. I'm talking 60s, 70s, a little bit of 80s. So I'm really excited to be here. I'm going to try and impart to you, the beloved Car Guys viewers, what it's like to attend this event, what it's like to see all these cars. I'm going to show you as many as I can, the ones that really interest me. Hopefully, you'll see something that you like. There's roughly four or five hundred Mercedes here today, so I'm going to show you my personal favourites. So if that sounds like your special kind of Mercedes vodka, let's get on with it. So here I am then at Simply Mercedes here at Bewley, and as you can see, I brought the S600 My back here today, and it's attracting quite a bit of a crowd. People seem to love it. I'm getting a lot of people sat in the back, including, as you can see here, car spotter extraordinaire, Robert Denton. But this is a great chance for me to immerse myself in the world of Mercedes and also see some of the older classics that I love so much. This episode is really gonna be me wandering around all of these cars, talking nonsense, ooing and ahhing at some of the colors and some of the specs and some of those incredibly rare models. For me, this is a voyage of discovery. I've always loved Mercedes. I've only ever owned one, and that's this one, but I did come very close last week on collecting cars to buying that 500E that I was so obsessed about in my 90s car video, which you may have seen. Hopefully, it will be interesting and informative and perhaps even, dare I say it, entertaining. But uh, let's see, shall we? Now, obviously, I've got to start today with this magnificent 560 SEC. As you can see, pillarless doors, the windows dropped around. This is a proper muscular thing. I love this. It reminds me of that hammer that they had in the 80s, 90s, but I love it. This one's got split rims. This is really what I think of when I think of the muscular early Mercedes, but I absolutely love the look of this thing. It's really elegant, but at the same time, incredibly brutal it's just such a handsome beast this yeah some of the era of mercedes that really get me excited is something exactly like this i never really told you about my obsession with wagons as the americans call them or estates as we call them in the uk mercedes estates or wagons i do really really like there's something about the proportions of this car and this 280 te a very special example makes it go a little bit wobbly at the knees as you can see it's in a wonderful almost teal color with a biscuit caramel-esque interior it's got all those period details that you absolutely need from these cars this one's got a beautiful chrome roof rack on it and an enormous boot as well don't forget these things can really carry a lot of luggage or a lot of load look at it look at the proportions of it even right now and i'll swing it around to here you've got this one here which is of course a 1986 but then if i show you this one there you go now we're bang up to date so this is a modern 2017 c63 estate same sort of proportions a lot more muscular but these things actually quite rare insanely powerful very fast but still really practical and just like the audi rs6 i love them Now it doesn't get more rock star than this 230E in jet black. It's a proper badass looking car, but at the same time, really statesman-like. And it's powered by a four cylinder 2.3 litre engine. It's got a part leather, part cloth, interior in a sort of biscuity tone which complements the black amazingly but this car's got a very special history because it was originally driven for 34 years by a new zealander who came to the uk in the second world war he owned it until he was 94 and it was then passed on to the second owner who now has this car it might not be the most expensive it might not be the most rare but it's certainly one of the coolest cars here no question Now I've never had an AMG GTR, but I've often coveted them. Carbon roof, as you can see, this one is in that matte green paintwork known as Green Hell, which probably 
is the one I would go for, because if you're going to have a GTR, you might as well get something that's a little bit outrageous, and I think this is. Of all the modern Mercedes, I'm less excited by those souped up crazy AMG saloons. It's a little bit overt for me, but I have to say, I have thought about getting one of these quite a few times. People say they're quite noisy, people say they're a bit cramped inside, but probably of the modern Mercedes, I could sort of maybe see one of these in the car guy's garage, maybe. Look how menacing and ferocious it is. It looks like it's just come off of the Nürburgring 24 hours. You're not gonna see a huge number of modern Mercedes in this episode, but this is one that I really do like. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about old Mercedes and the ones I really like. Look, look at this. It's in an incredible gold color, which obviously I'm obviously gonna love. It's a 280 SE. It is elegant. It is like a crazy safari vehicle almost. The shapes and the swoops on this car. This is what I absolutely love about these older Mercedes. This is why I wanted to come to this show. Cars just like this. You can see here it's got extra spotlights on the front. You've got matching gold hubcaps. And inside, yeah, exactly what you want. A lot of wood, classic dials, classic steering wheel. This one smells very heavily of dog but it's well used and it's well loved. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the 280 SE. Many of you will be familiar with the Collecting Cars website. It's an auction site online and cars just like this come up all the time at very attractive prices. I've come close to buying some of these slightly older SLs, both of these are SL 500s. They're probably owned by friends who like to go touring together, but who knows? One in black, one in blue. This sort of shape I've come close to buying a few times. The 500 is the one that I would want. Yeah, these are a bit of me. But I have to say, when it comes to special cars, I saw this one drive in and it captivated me straight away. This is a 280 SE. It's in yellow, but the most interesting thing for me is that this is a 1972 car, which is my birth year. So this one, I've, I've got a kinship with this car, like unlike anything else that we've seen today. It's also got green leather interior, green. So as you can see, I've got my ice cream. I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna look at this car for a full 10 minutes. This 280 SE has a 3.5 litre V8 petrol engine, a fitting power plant for a very special vehicle. And it is the first S-Class Mercedes. They were known as the W108 and 109s, depending on the size of the wheelbase, but it's the green leather that really takes my breath away. It's absolutely fantastic. But look at the classic lines and proportions of this car. The length of it, the height, the way that that line goes all the way back in chrome, the body colored hubcaps, the size of the boot, which you could easily fit three or four bodies in. I'm a big fan, as you know, of good old big smokers, big engine, luxurious saloons. I've got the BMW 750, I've got the Mercedes S600 Maybach, and I absolutely love this, as I'm sure you do as well. This might be my car of the show, but, uh, it's early days yet. Anyone who used to watch Dallas in the 80s will recognize one of these SLs. They were synonymous with the show. We like to call these the Bobby Ewings. This is a later 1989 SL300. They're actually becoming quite collectible now. And although I would always, always go for the earlier cars of the SLs, yeah, I could sort of see myself wafting around France in one of these. If that pulled up outside your house, you'd think, oh no. A drug dealer is here. And you can't really do a video about Mercedes without mentioning the 280 SL, the Pagoda, the world famous car. This is probably right up my alley as I become older, as I pass 51, as I am now. This is the sort of car that I start to yearn for. If you've got a holiday home in France, the perfect car. If you've got a holiday home in Ibiza, the perfect car. To be honest, if you're just tooling around the British countryside, you really need to get one of these.
I actually had a Barago model of one of these. This is a 190 SL. So this is like one of those early SLs. There's a lot more bulbous, it's a lot more swoopy and therefore in many ways an absolute work of art. This is in a dazzling black paintwork and it's got a matching painted dashboard in black around the dials. Inside is cream. It's just so stylish these things. It's not fully my cup of tea. I think I am very much further in the next generation of the SL but I mean you can't help but be breathless when you see something like this in the flesh. And just for completeness here's one in red. So this is quite an interesting story with this car because you will remember the red 300 SL that I was talking about just a bit earlier, the Bobby Ewing type spec. Well this car really is almost its sister car because they're about three months apart in terms of build. This one as you can see is in a bit more of a crimson shade, not quite as bright as the earlier, but they're both 300 SLs and they're both absolutely fabulous. Yes, finally, someone has brought a 600 grocer to Simply Mercedes. This is the car I always love to see. I've come very, very close to buying these in the past, but I always, always love to see a 600. They make me smile. They're probably the ultimate vintage Mercedes for me, one that I've always wanted to have, but of course, I've been scared off by tales of crazy hydraulic pricing fixes. Nothing quite beats the sheer opulence of a 600. And look who decided to turn up and win the battle of the cherished number plates. As you can see, this SL55 has the number plate SL55, which is very much what I've done with my McLaren 675LT with the number plate 675LT. Some people are just so flipping literal. And regular viewers of the channel will know how I feel about blue cars with red interiors. Yes. Mercedes seem to really have nailed this pillarless door open coupe look. And you can see here this 250 CE in white really is a very elegant machine indeed. You know that silver SL280 that we saw earlier? Yeah, I think I kind of prefer it in dark blue. This one is cream leather, cream interior, dark blue paintwork. This one wins the battle of the 280 SLs in my opinion. This is the one I would have. Another South of France classic is this 280 SE in a sort of moonstony blue metallic with cream interior. This is probably the most stylish and cool car here at the show today. I saw it come in, I was astounded. I'm pretty sure Zuckerman from Spikes Car Radio might have had one of these, but look at that. When people talk about classic Mercedes, this is what they mean. Your eyes do not deceive you folks. This is a 450 SEL, which means it's got a 6.8 litre engine and it's in a kind of sage green. So perhaps here at the show today, this may well be the ultimate expression, apart from that 600 grocer, but this is one of those uber saloons that I absolutely adore. If you're gonna go for a big saloon, go for the biggest engine and the longest wheelbase, in my opinion, and it won't do you wrong. But yeah, this one, lovely. Sir, I salute you. Well, here I am at Journey's End, and I hoped there would be one of these here. It's kind of circular, I mentioned it at the start. This is a 500E, and it is exceptionally cool. I mentioned it in my 90s cars I would buy in a heartbeat, and indeed, I almost bought one of these on collecting cars just a couple of weeks ago. There is something about the way these cars sit on the road, or in this case, the grass. It's all about the stance with the 500E. It just looks like a normal 190, but now it's squatter, it's meaner, and I just think, yeah, one of these has got to be in my garage at some point. And it's a shame that I missed out on the one recently. Well, there you are, that's the end of the day. I've looked around this entire area and I picked out the Mercedes that I found particularly interesting. What have I learned then now that we're at the end of this episode? We've learned that I still love large, massive engined Mercedes saloons and of course estates. We've learned that I'm a big sucker for a dark blue 280 SL, that I still love the 600 
grosser and that by and large modern Mercedes do pretty much nothing for me. I've also learnt that Mercedes owners are very lovely people, they're very generous with their time and they love their vehicles. And one thing I also definitely know is that I'm not a fan of this. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here at Beaulieu today and to experience Simply Mercedes for the first time. If you like what we're doing on the car guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes and there'll be another episode next week.